Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Bob CNC E4. Over the last six months I've started to see some issues with it and when you're doing basic cuts it's fine but when you're starting to get into profile bits and 3D cutting um, these issues start to really ruin projects so I needed to fix them before I carried on with any of my current projects. The issues with this CNC we're going to be addressing today are the gantry twisting issues and a inconsistent z-axis issue. So I've set up the camera here so you can see the gantry twisting issue I'm talking about. This is me twisting directly on the gantry. There's even more torque when the bit is four inches below the gantry. So it's it's a lot worse in reality when you're actually using the CNC. Now recently Bob CNC has come out with a new gantry design which is pretty interesting so I must not be the only one dealing with this issue. So we're going to make a kind of a torsion box out of this half inch Baltic birch. Now, I also doubled the vertical supports to make this torsion box a lot stronger and then put them where I could secure the vertical support to the quarter inch on the gantry. Here's the assembled torsion box design. Probably could have made it a little bit more pretty with some routing, but I'd rather it work than be pretty at the moment. So I was trying to get it done uh, in about two days. Now you can see I tried to keep everything pretty much intact so there wasn't too much uh, left for reassembly once you get the torsion box built. Most of this, if I would have grabbed my angle head driver, I wouldn't have had to take that off. But you can see those screws are kind of hard to get to back behind that plate. Alright, and here's the final assembly. Everything's been cleaned and lubed up. The Arduino has been mounted. One thing I will do is probably make some way to secure the wires like the stock configuration because I've actually already had issues with uh, actually one of my limit switches coming unplugged. So, don't like that happening. Now here in this shot I was just trying to show some of the dust that had collected on these rails. You had to clean these pretty often, almost every cut, to make sure that those wheels didn't get jammed up or locked up. You can see how dirty they are. Um, the only fix to this is just throwing a vacuum set up on it. Uh, I made a very rudimentary simple one, and it's actually worked out really great. So I'll show that in another video at some time. Here I'm just setting the gantry back on the machine, getting the rails run and the belts rerouted. Okay, there is the movement that I'm talking about. And the problem there is there's just a slight, I mean, we're talking maybe one, thousand, one to two thousandths movement between these two washers. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna fix that. My ideal repair would be to actually weld this longer nut onto these washers. Um, but we'll see if that happens. That's just, uh, I gotta go to a buddy shop and get it well. We don't have a welder here, so. Little did past me know how motivated I would get to get this done. 
So unfortunately, my first round of brazing actually ruined basically that whole screw setup. So I had to replace everything. And the problem was that I replaced that black threaded rod, which was bent as well, and I think was causing me issues with a new rod that zinc coated. And I've been having nothing but issues with the zinc coating. I have to lube the rod up really well to make sure that the Z-axis does not hit a hard point and stop the program. So I'll be replacing that. But other than that, this worked out great. The Z-axis is like spot on as far as accuracy now. So um, overall, the work is just the materials that I had gotten because this was in the middle of the corona uh, shutdown here in Washington State. So... Uh, I was really limited to where I could buy things and what I could get. Now this is actually my first time brazing anything. I've done a lot of soldering. I actually took a jewelry class in high school, which is where I got this charcoal block idea. Uh, you just pre-burn this 2x4 up really well and then sand it flat. That way when you're brazing it, it's not moving your piece all over. And jewelry we had like professional ones, so this one's a little bit more ghetto. Okay, so here's the finished pro product here. You want to make sure it's just a couple of tacks. This was a little bit too big of a glob here, but uh, the important thing is to keep the sides good and clear so they can still go into the quarter inch. Fits in there just like that. Okay, everything's reassembled now. It's just going back into its cabinet here. Best thing I've ever done is build a cabinet for this thing. It's so loud and ear piercing. This eliminates from having to wear ear protection all the time because most of the time while you're running this, you're probably doing something else in the shop anyway. It's probably why you bought a CNC. <laughs> Now, if you do put your CNC in a cabinet, probably want to make sure all the wiring is 100% correct before you put it in the cabinet, because it's not as easy to check the wiring once it's in there. Alright, so now everything's assembled. It's really nice and stiff. Uh, just setting up the z-axis with a piece of paper. You just go down until the paper you can't move it around. Sorry for the pounding, Dad's building some cabinets in the background. So this is just a little test tool path that I set up uh, for the square. It's a two inch square. You measure the dimensions there plus the squareness of that square. <laughs> and then the depth of cut between, I do two different depth of cut between the circle and the square to test how consistent the z-axis is. In this case, it was really, I mean, the, the square was 1.99 and then the depths were spot on. So I think that I've got everything kind of ironed out. Uh, I've done some more cutting on it and it's done really well. 